All right, guys, I wanted to make this video to work through the test review um, with you guys so that you were getting the correct answers and so that I could talk about more stuff that I needed to before we take our test. Um, so this is our unit three test review. We're going to go through it and answer all the questions. And um, hopefully this helps you, one, fill out your test review, maybe understand something a little bit better that you haven't understood previously. Okay, so the periodic table is all about unit three. Um, how we created the periodic table, how we created atoms, or models of atoms, shall I say, and then periodic trends and periodic table families. Okay, so let's get started. Um, number one, how is Mendeleev's periodic table organized? So remember that Mendeleev was, is the father of the periodic table, okay? And how he organized the elements on the periodic table was by increasing atomic number. Increasing atomic number. Okay, so keep in mind that if I were to draw a periodic table square right here, let's say that I have carbon, okay, here's its mass and its name, okay, the top number with no decimal is the atomic number. Okay, so those top numbers on a periodic table square is the atomic number, okay? Um, the atomic number is going to tell us protons and electrons, all right? So from carbon, we know that we have six protons and electrons, okay? If I wanted to find neutrons, I'm going to do 12 minus 6 gives me six neutrons, okay? So that's all the information that we can find from a periodic table square. All right, back to our review question. So the columns on the period periodic table are called groups. So we have group one, group two, and so on. The rows on the periodic table are called periods. Remember, we um, call rows periods that are go across the periodic table, just like we read across a page for a sentence, and there's a period at the end, okay? So the rows across the periodic table are called periods. The up and down columns are called groups. Most of the elements on the periodic table are metals, okay? There's a huge chunk of the periodic table that are just metals. So metals make up the majority of our periodic table. All right, number five is gonna ask about a periodic table trend. This was 3.7 notes, okay? We talked about periodic table trends. Consider atoms of the following, which are located as shown on the periodic table. So this is um, a snippet of the periodic table. They're located just like this, okay? If I were to go see a periodic table, I would see S, C, L, S, E, and B, R right beside each other. So this one's to know which has the highest electronegativity. If I remember, electronegativity is going to go up and to the right on the periodic table, okay? So... The highest is gonna be the furthest up and to the right. So up and to the right is gonna be chlorine. Highest ionization energy. So ionization energy works just the same as electronegativity, up and to the right. So once again, this is gonna be chlorine. All right, and then it says, which atom has the smallest atomic radius? So atomic radius points down and to the left. So opposite of that, because it's asking for smallest, would be up and to the right, which again is chlorine, okay? The largest atomic radius would be selenium, all right? But since it's asked for smallest, the answer is going to be chlorine. Okay, number six. It says, name the only element touching the stair-step line that is not a metalloid. So remember, I'm going to draw on this. Our stair-step line, okay, if this is boron, it starts like this. And we've said that every element that touches that stair step is a metalloid, except for this one right here, which is aluminum. Okay, we know that aluminum is metal. It's not a metalloid. So the answer to number six would be A, aluminum. Number seven, boron and silicon form similar compounds and are very similar due to their blank relationship. So this goes back and knowing that groups on the periodic table, okay, if they are in the same group, they're in the same column, then they're going to have similar properties because they have the same number of valence electrons, all right? So boron and silicon are in the same column. They're going to have um, 
similar compounds because they are in the same group, also known as the same family. So it's because of their familial relationship. Okay, familial relationship. That just means that they are in the same family. Okay, you will be able to use a periodic table on your test, so don't freak out. You don't have to memorize where these things are located. Okay, number eight. Unknown element X has four energy levels, five valence electrons, and is a metalloid. What is element X? So what I want to do on these questions is find a periodic table, okay? This five valence electrons tells me that it is in group five. Okay, four energy levels tells me that it is in the fourth period. Okay, valence electrons tell you groups, energy levels tell you periods. Okay, and I know that it's going to be a metalloid. So I'm going to go to period four, group five on my periodic table. So period four, one, two, three, four, group five or five valence electrons, okay, five valence electrons, is gonna be arsenic, okay? I see that it's touching the staircase, so it is a metalloid. So my answer is going to be AS for arsenic. Number nine, how many valence electrons does one atom of calcium have? Okay, I'm gonna find calcium on my periodic table. It's right here in group two. So it's going to have two valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons go increasingly across the table, excluding transition metals. Okay? So I have one valence electron, two valence electrons, three valence electrons, four, five, and so on. Okay? So since calcium is in group two, it's going to have two valence electrons. So the answer to number nine is C2. All right. Periodic table trends to label. Be as detailed as you can. So we're going to label a few things on this periodic table. Um, these things right over here are what we're going to label, okay? These are all trends. Atomic radius, ionic radius, and electronegativity and ionization energy. Those are all trends. Okay, and I'm just going to put the information for those trends right up here in this white space. Okay, so I know that my trend for atomic radius... is down and to the left my trend for ionic radius is down and to the right and then my electronegativity trend and my ionization energy trend are the same And this one goes up and to the right, okay, for both electronegativity and ionization energy. So those are my trends that I labeled. All right, now I need to label the alkaline earth metals. So what I'm going to do there is just write across um, these groups, okay, I'm going to write their names where they should be, okay. So alkaline earth metals is going to be group two. So they're going to be right here, group two. Alkaline earth metals. Halogens are going to be group 17. Group 17. So these are my halogens. Transition metals are going to be that big group 3 through 12. So this middle short block right here is all of my transition metals. Okay, next we have noble gases. They are noble. Everybody wants to be like a noble gas. And that's going to be in group 18. So the very last group is my noble gases. Okay, alkali metals is group 1. 
Remember, these metals are very, very reactive. We did a lab on these guys with lithium and sodium and showed just how reactive they are. All right, so it says um, shade the metalloid semiconductors. All right, we're going to, this blue line right here shows our metalloids. And I'm just going to shade in the ones that are, in fact, metalloids. And it's all the ones that are touching that zigzag line um, except for aluminum. All right, non-metals light green. So we're going to leave the non-metals white just because I don't have a light green with me. Okay, so the non-metals I'm going to leave white and that's going to be all of this section right here um, passed to the right of that stair step shaded part. Okay, so all of these white boxes are non-metals. Um, the metals we're going to do light red. Okay, so I have a red pin here. So all of these... All of the rest of these elements to the left of those metalloids are metals, including aluminum and including these two rows down here. Okay, so those are metals in red. We did metalloids in blue and then white is all of the non-metals that we have on our periodic table. All right, so that's the periodic table in a nutshell. Let's go, go to the Bohr model of an atom. So remember, Bohr model of an atom, this was um, Niels Bohr. He said that those electrons are gonna travel in energy levels or orbits, okay? Bohr hypothesized that electrons travel in energy levels. Or orbits around the outside of the nucleus. He said that electrons were located in discrete energy levels. Okay, the first energy level, we have drawn these before. We know that that first energy level can only hold two electrons. Okay, the second energy level could hold eight. And the third energy level can hold 18 electrons. Okay, so we got to keep that in mind whenever we move on to this next question. And we want to draw four models of the following atoms, okay? So in order to draw a Bohr model, I need to know protons, electrons, and neutrons, okay? And I can get that information from the periodic table. So let's look at nitrogen on our periodic table. All right, nitrogen is right here, and it has an atomic number of seven. So that tells me that for nitrogen, I'm gonna have seven protons and seven electrons. All right, now to find neutrons, I'm gonna do 14. Okay, I'm gonna round that to 14 minus seven. I also have seven neutrons. Okay, so now let's draw that Bohr model. I'm gonna have a nucleus, and in the nucleus goes protons and neutrons. So I'm gonna do 7P, 7N. All right, now it's time for me to draw these seven electrons. Okay, we just said that in my first energy level, I can only have two. So one, two. So seven minus two, I need five more. So I need another energy level. I'm gonna draw a second energy level. This energy level can hold eight, but I only need five. So I'm just gonna draw five dots. One, two, three, four, five. That is my Bohr model for nitrogen. Okay, let's do the same thing for sodium. Sodium is over here in group one, it's Na, right here. I have an atomic number of 11. So that tells me that I have 11 protons and 11 electrons. For neutrons, I'm gonna round 22.9 to 23 and subtract 23 minus 11 is gonna give me um, 12 neutrons. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna draw my nucleus, which has 11 protons and 12 neutrons. And now, I need to add energy levels for my 11 electrons, okay? So once again, first energy level can only hold two. So one, two, 11 minus two, I have nine left, okay? So my second energy level can only hold eight. So I'm gonna draw all eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have one left, so I'm gonna need a third energy level and just one right there. So now my Bohr model is done for sodium. 
Okay, we're gonna do argon. Okay, argon is a noble gas, which means that it's in group 18. Right here, it has 18 as the atomic number. So I'm gonna have 18 protons and 18 electrons. I'm gonna round 39.9 up to 40. So 40 minus 18 is going to give me um, I'm sorry, 40 minus 18 is going to be 22 neutrons, okay? So, nucleus with my protons and neutrons, and now I'm going to start drawing my Bohr models, okay? So, I have 18 electrons. I'm going to use two of them. So, I have 16 left. Eight can go in my second one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight left, and that's gonna be my last energy level. It's all the rest of those eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so those are my three Bohr models. Now, what I can look at on a Bohr model is valence electrons. Okay, remember, valence electrons are in the outermost energy level. Okay, so this outermost energy level for nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five dots. So I know that nitrogen is going to have five valence electrons. Okay, if I count the outer ring for sodium, this is the outer ring, it just has one dot. Sodium has one valence electron. Argon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons because that's how many is on that last ring that we drew. Okay, so Bohr models give us a whole bunch of information. All right, now we're going to get more specifically into trends. Okay, I'm going to define atomic radius. That's going to be distance from the center. We'll say distance from the nucleus. to the outermost energy level. Okay. Um, does atomic radius increase or decrease as you go down a group family on the periodic table? So as I go down, what is my arrow point like for atomic radius? Okay, if I go back in my notes, all right, on this front page, Atomic radius goes down and to the left, so it means it increases going down. Okay, so does atomic radius increase or decrease as you go down? It's going to increase. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Does atomic radius increase or decrease as you go across a periodic table? Okay, my arrow points to the left, so if I go across, it's going to decrease going across. Okay, remember my arrows for atomic radius go, um, we'll draw them over here, go down and to the left. That's where it gets bigger. All right, which atom in each pair has the larger atomic radius? Okay, larger is going to go in the direction of the arrows. I have O or C. Let's look at my periodic table. <coughs> Let's look at my periodic table. Excuse me, guys, I don't know why I'm so sneezy. I have O and I have C, okay? Atomic radius points to the left, so the one on the left is gonna be larger. So my answer for this one is gonna be C. Now I have BE or BA, okay? Here's BE, BA is underneath it. Atomic radius points down, so the furthest one down is gonna be the largest, which in this case is BA. Okay, once again, we're going to circle the atom in each pair that has the largest atomic radius. I have AL and I have B. So here's AL, here's B, atomic radius points down. So whichever one is further down is going to be the biggest, which is AL. NA, AL. So here's NA, here's AL. Atomic radius points to the left. So whichever one is more left is going to be bigger. That's going to be NA. I have S and O. So here's S. Here's O, okay? Whichever one is down is going to be bigger because the atomic radius arrow points down. Now I have O and I have F, okay? So here's O, 
Here's F. Whichever one is pointing left, because atomic radius goes left, is going to be bigger, so that's going to be oxygen. BR and CL. Okay? Atomic radius points down. So BR is below CL, so BR is going to be bigger. MG and CA. MG, CA, yes, it's going to be the bottom one again, okay? Because the arrow points down, so CA is going to be bigger. All right, we're going to move on to ionization energy, okay? So this is the energy required to remove an electron. And my arrows for ionization energy go to the right and up. So what trend in ionization energy do you see as you go down a group? Okay, as I go down, it's going to decrease because my arrow is pointing up. Okay, so I'm going to decrease as I go down a group. I'm going to increase as I go across the periodic table to the right. Okay, which atom in each pair has the smaller ionization energy? So, I'm going to pick the one opposite of the arrows. Na or Al. So here's Al. Here's Na. Ionization energy points to the right, but I want the smallest. So I'm going to do the one on the left side to get the smallest because my arrow points to the right. So Na would be the smaller ionization energy. N or P. So here's N. Here's P. Ionization energy points up, so I have to pick the opposite one, which is P, to get the smallest. Okay, number 21. Circle the atom in each pair that has the greater ionization energy. Okay, so greater ionization energy is going to be towards the arrows. Okay, so L-I-B-E. L-I-B-E. B-E goes towards the arrow, so B-E is going to be greater. C-A and B-A. C-A. BA, ionization energy points up, so it's going to be CA, that's the greatest ionization energy. NA and K. NA, K, arrow points up, so I'm going to pick the up one, which is NA. I have P and AR. So over here is AR, there is P. Okay, my ionization energy points to the right, so I'm going to pick the one on the right, which is argon. CL and SI. So here's chlorine. Here's silicon. Once again, I'm going to pick the one that goes with the arrow to the right. Chlorine. Lithium and K. So LI and K. Arrow points up. So I'm going to pick the up one, which is lithium. All right. Arrange the following elements from lowest to highest ionization energy. Okay. So I'm going to start with the lowest ionization energy and work my way up to the highest. So I'm going to go to the right across my periodic table to get these things in order. Okay, so B, E, M, G, C, A, R, B, and S, R. Okay, here's R, B, and S, R. Then I have C, A, M, G, and B, E. Okay, so I'm gonna go in this particular order right here, okay? I'm gonna start with the furthest left and work my way up and to the right to get bigger. So R, B is gonna have the smallest, and then SR, and then CA, and then MG, and then BE. So number letter B is the my correct answer there. All right, define electronegativity. So electronegativity is the um, ability of an atom to attract an electron. And my arrows for electronegativity work the same as ionization energy up and to the right. All right, as I go down a group, it's opposite of my arrow, so it's going to decrease. As I go across, it's going to follow my arrow, so I'm going to increase. All right, number 25, okay, we're still talking about electronegativity. Um, which element has the greatest electronegativity? So, I'm going to go up and to the right on my periodic table. So, up and to the right, okay? 
helium is the furthest up to the right, but remember, we exclude noble gases and electronegativity, okay? So up here, go ahead and write that we exclude group 18. So, <coughs> excluding group 18 is going to be fluorine as the top right element. So fluorine is going to have the greatest electronegativity out of all of my elements. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. All right. Which atom in each pair has the larger electronegativity? Okay. Up and to the right is going to be larger. So Al or Si. Al, Si. The one to the right, because it follows my arrow, is going to be larger. So my answer is Si. N, A, or K? N, A, K? K, the arrow points up, so I'm going to pick the up one, which is N, A. <coughs> Excuse me. O, or P, is over here on the right side of my periodic table. O, P, K, up and to the right is definitely going to be oxygen. Up and to the right. Okay? Circle the atom in each pair that has the greater electronegativity. Once again, up and to the right, C A G A. So here is C A, and G A is over here. Okay, my arrow points to the right, so I'm going to pick the element that's furthest right, which is G A. B A and S R. So here's B A, here's S R. My arrow points up, so I'm going to pick the element that's more up, and that is S R. L I and O. So here's lithium over here. Oxygen is right here, okay? The one that is more right is going to be the biggest, so it's going to be oxygen. I have O and S. O and S, okay? My arrow points up, so i got to pick the up one, which is oxygen. BR and AS, all right? Here is um, AS. Here is BR. Whichever one is furthest right, because my arrow points right, is going to be the largest, so that's going to have to be BR. I have CL and S. CL, S, my arrow points right. So again, I'm going to pick that furthest right element, which is CR, CL, to get the greatest electronegativity. All right, last question. Of F, E, K, P, and CL, which would you expect to have the greatest electronegativity? Remember, up and to the right is the greatest for electronegativity. So F, E is um right here okay k is right here and then i have p and then i have cl okay well automatically my arrow is pointing to the right so i know it's going to be one of these two okay also these two are further up than k and fe so these two are knocked out so the one with the greatest electronegativity is the furthest right and up one which is going to be chlorine all right, so that is it on our periodic table study guide, okay? If you can do this um, test review and turn it in completed correctly, completely, then you're going to get 10 extra points on your test, okay? But it has to be correctly filled out and completely filled out, okay? Study this thing, get to know it, love the periodic table, and you're going to do great on that test tomorrow.